Okay, so in the last video, I was talking about how we were going to improve the uh, this constraints function. We'd got up to like sort of here. Um, yeah, we got up to about here, and then we, I was talking about how we could add the impossible groups check function thing down here. So that's what I've done. I've added this function. Um, if you want to read what it does, it's commented in right here. Um, all the code will be on GitHub. I'm not going to be going through this code and explain what it does, but long story short, it um, it basically detects if every single group, and um, by group we mean empty space, like group of empty space, if every single group, um, it checks that every single group is able to have a colour go into it and that every colour is able to go into a group, basically. Um, have a read through, see if you can figure it out on your own from the GitHub. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them below. But I've implemented this change now and ran it on the uh, the test cases and stuff and found that it's actually a reasonable runtime now. It can actually solve this board, so like the actual board, not one that was partially filled in like the previous version. Um, in a reasonable time, it's still like seven minutes runtime, which is or seven or eight minutes, something like that. Um, which is way longer than I would want it to be, but it's still, it works, and it's like, it's not so long that it can't be ran, so it's not terrible, but obviously I will try and get that number down. Now, while I've been talking, it's actually been running in the background, trying to solve this board, um, using the, like the main loop, it's now getting called in, it's been called inside this loop, and it's going to actually draw it out when it's done, so just gonna flick that up on screen while I continue talking and obviously we'll see it solve it at some point. Um, you're seeing the wrong command line, I wonder if this is gonna change here, there we go. So these are some other boards that I've run um, that get solved in like five seconds, I'll show you these as well once it's done. But the board that I'm trying to solve now I think takes this long, um, as you can see like eight minutes. So. Yeah, I actually started this at the start of the video, so it's probably going to be about 8 minutes into the video when you see it um, draw a solution. So, what I might do is, if I drag this over here, and I drag this over here, um, we can go through the code a little bit. So. I'm going to talk about um, what I'm what I plan on doing next. So this impossible groups check. I'm not going to go through the code line for the line, but I'm going to show why it's so um, inefficient, really, and some ideas for improving it. Um, it loops over the board here, and then it loops over the board again here. So it's not great, and it's doing this for. Um, Oh, and it loops over the board here as well. So that's three times, but it loops over the board somewhere down here. Yeah, this one. Um, for each group number, so if there's a lot of groups, then it loops over the board like multiple times. Um, group being an area of empty space. So yeah, so it can end up looping over the, the board a hell of a lot of times just for like one simple function. Um, what I'm thinking about doing is adding in some other simple checks to see if a, a board's valid. So for example, um, checking if there's an isolated um, colour. So like if this yellow right here was to come out left and then go down, we could just check if this green was isolated. And um, It's quite easy to do, you just check for like ends of colours and if one of them isn't surrounded by at least one empty space then we have an invalid board because it means that end can't move so there's that possibility um, I might add that in but also um, what I would like to do is have it so that I can incorporate my old code with the new code so it makes like um, some smarter decisions about where to move like if there's a forced move it will make the forced move like in the old code it used to, like this one. What I'm thinking about doing is um, inside the recursive loop, so 
this loop right here, we would have like um, the board would come in, it would then get passed through all of the methods we have in here that are guaranteed to not cause errors, so like these ones up here. Um, and once it's been passed through all these, the board would then be equal to that. If the board's been solved, it would then just be returned. Um, if it's not solved, then it would recurse again. So obviously that's like the job of this bit down here. So yeah, this bit down here. Um, so yeah, I'm thinking about doing that, like incorporating that somehow. We could like just call the solve board function from here. Now we've imported the module. So that's probably going to be the next video. Um, I'm thinking with that, that should take down the branching factor like a lot because as soon as you create a move um, without having to do this, like generate all possible moves, you actually decrease the complexity of the board like a hell of a lot. And I'm thinking that will drop our speed, uh, increase our speed, sorry, to like the the levels I'm looking for. I'm just wondering how it will perform on the bigger boards. Like five by fives, I have no issue with. Like all of those have already been solved, and I have no doubt this function can solve them all in like split seconds. But the like seven by seven areas, eight by eight, nine by nine, I'm thinking we might have issues there with some like big open spaces. But I'm not sure. We'll have to see when we get there. So yeah, that's that's planned in the next video that's what you'll be seeing there um, expecting this to solve like any second now really but I guess we'll see um, don't think there's anything else that I've been planning on adding but yeah this uh, recursive solver is about to go on github so this will this version now it's actually working and um, does produce answers, like does produce valid solutions and doesn't just get stuck or take too long or whatever. Um, this version will now be on GitHub as like the first commit of this version of this type of solver and then I'll uh, the following commits will be just like optimizations and stuff so go check that out if you're interested Coming up to like seven minutes fifty now. I think I I started this right as the video started, so like any second I'm expecting it to solve. But I'm not certain that I ran the uh, the test case on the actual board. I think I made one move, but I'm not certain. I give it till uh, nine minutes, and if it isn't solved by then, I'll just cut the video off and we'll go back to it in a future video. Pretty sure this was the uh, the time for a solution though. Okay, it doesn't seem like it's going to be doing it, so let's just stop this one. Oh wow, well, and as I stop it, it does it. <laughs> okay, so 600 seconds that one. Um, perhaps I did make a move on the other one, that's why it took like an extra 2 minutes. But even so, I'm, I'm pretty happy with uh, 10 minutes being the, the time to solve this board. Because, as you'll see with the other boards, like if I run it on this one, um, a lot of the boards don't actually take that long to solve, like this one here solved instantly again solved pretty much instantly so yeah I am pretty sure this is a decent enough algorithm to have it run on the majority of the boards um, that, that are 5x5 five five. I think so far the only one I've came across that takes a while is the one I just showed um, we could actually have this loop through let me just do that quickly. 
so if I pass in this bit right here just want the move to the next level bit down here um, draw a solution we've already got that but I suppose we could have it up there I suppose I could just delete this bit right here may as well get rid of that so you can see what I'm doing get rid of this bit get rid of this bit get rid of that and case that all in a while true um, right there something like that should work now pop this back up make this a bit bigger, make this a bit bigger and save that and run brilliant uh, where do I have move finder, there we go ah ok so I just need to put the um, what's it called, flow free bot dot move finder for free bot dot draw solution save that and run there we go so let's see if it can solve the five by fives and I have an imported pi or GUI interesting because it's oh okay yeah because it's imported in the other module play it again If any of these take longer than like 10 seconds I'm just going to cut it off but I'm expecting the only one to be that level 26 or whatever it was. Um, so yeah we'll just go until either we hit 26 or a different one that's going to take too long. But you can see all of these aren't taking very long to solve at all so this recursive function is definitely uh, working it just misclicked there on the red but you'll have seen it did actually draw the right solution um, just to prove it I'll actually just rerun it on this one I don't actually know what caused it to misclick because obviously it's it's just a computer program, it can't misclick. It just must be that like maybe the game doesn't register a click because of it happening at a specific time or something.
still not had a slow one, so it does seem like the only one that's slow is 26. Ooh, maybe I spoke too soon. Nope. This is one of the slower ones, definitely, but it still solved it. So yeah, this is 26, this is going to take a while, so I'll break it off right here. Skip this one, and then we'll just finish the five by fives just for completeness. I'm not going to run any of the six by six, but you can try that yourself if you want to pull the code from GitHub, or I might run it in another video or something like that. And final level, easy. So only one took a while. Um. Just out of curiosity, you can't do the first 6x6. Six six. Yeah, really quick as well. Okay, so that's it for this video. Um, next time, probably going to be implementing the other methods, like the old methods that I coded in previous versions, like not the recursive version. Um, just to try and get that final level, that level 26, to um, be, fa be fast, because obviously this has forced moves, like a lot of them. Uh, this is forced around here, this is forced up here, that's then forced to there, this is forced up here and around here, this is forced up here, now these would be connected and obviously these would be forced, so this level can be solved just purely by forced moves, so this level is possible to get done instantly if I include the other methods. Um, so that would get all the 5 by 5s done, and get them done instant. So, yeah, I guess level 20 is going to be the aim to do since level 20 hasn't been done yet by a program that I've coded. Um, not too sure how long this would take to run but I guess I can leave this running and come back to it later. I'll probably the next video I make will probably tell you how long this button took to run because I am interested to see if it can solve this level. Um, just going to cancel this because I want the code to actually end after it runs that once. Um, okay, so check code out on GitHub if you want to run it yourself for these levels. Um, like I say, next one, I'm going to be implementing the other algorithms. So, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.